Imagine going a day without pain. Imagine wondering whether you will have it tomorrow. Imagine thinking no one can help. To shine at the piano, it takes commitment, grace, and poise, traits which Rebecca Taylor more than personifies. The fact that she has excelled behind the keys, let alone survived, evokes sheer awe, considering that Rebecca, now 15 years old, has been hospitalized and sick more than half of her life. Her downward spiral started at the age of seven. It was really scary because I'd never really been put in a hospital for a long period of time before. If I had a thousand adjectives, I could never describe the kind of pain that she went through. Just even thinking about it makes me sick to my stomach, but um, doubled over, incoherent, went three days without sleeping a single minute. Doctors first thought Rebecca had appendicitis. Additional tests confirmed something sinister. An unknown autoimmune disease was attacking her organs and triggering acute and chronic pancreatitis. And Rebecca, unlike other people who sometimes get past pancreatitis, she kept and continued on with her pain cycles and her pancreas stayed inflamed month after month after month. So there was no break, there was no relief, but it was unbelievable, absolutely heartbreaking, worse Thing I've been through in my life to watch a child, my child, have such pain. When you have an attack of pancreatitis, it is the worst pain that a human being can experience. And that comes from ladies that tell me about childbearing. It's from uh, individuals who had had amputations and trauma, injuries. All of them consistently tell me. Um, that there's nothing that brings them to their knees or causes as much suffering as the pain that uh, is experienced with pancreatitis. Dr. Sandeep Patel is a pancreatic specialist at UT Health Science Center of San Antonio. Of the thousands of healthcare professionals who have cared for Rebecca during the more than 1,000 days of hospitalization during her life, no one has treated Rebecca as often as Dr. Patel. We've had some very scary nights in the uh, pediatric ICU units where we weren't sure that Rebecca was going to make it through the night. Rebecca's pancreas was failing. Fluid was not draining properly through the ducts of the pancreas into the bile ducts. There was nausea, vomiting, severe malnourishment, infection, blood clots. It was the night before Christmas, we went through that house and the creature. Dr. Patel ended up performing 22 separate endoscopic procedures on Rebecca to open her pancreatic and bile ducts and combat her inflammation. But her condition only got worse. Rebecca needed a life-saving experimental transplant at the University of Minnesota in Minneapolis in 2014 to remove five of her organs. Rebecca herself would not have lived more than a few weeks past transplant. She was literally 48 pounds blood clots everywhere at death's door. Rebecca became the first child her age in Texas to survive such a radical and risky procedure. She's been living without a pancreas for more than three years. Her liver now pushed into the role of a super organ, tenuously producing the life essential cells which produce the hormone insulin and convert food into energy. And yet, despite all her pain and misery, Rebecca never turned bitter. Instead, she got braver, spending time in hospitals visiting children sickened by pancreatitis. I, I firmly believe that there are angels among us, and Rebecca is definitely, definitely one of them. Rebecca has transformed her fight for life into a crusade of hope. <laughs> she asked Make-A-Wish to help her fulfill a higher purpose. She requested a meeting with a medical philanthropist to help her start a charity, which would fund a facility in San Antonio 
to be the first of its kind in the world, dedicated to research and treatment of pediatric pancreatitis. My purpose is to be able to serve others and help them and not think of just myself. Physicians say Rebecca's wish is sorely needed, with hundreds of children dying annually from this misdiagnosed and misunderstood disease. And there being very little, if any, official research conducted in the field of pediatric pancreatitis. There is currently no zero training programs for pediatricians to acquire these skill sets. In an all fairness, because the pancreas has always sort of been the black box organ of the body. For years, the dogma was don't touch the pancreas. The Greeks called the pancreas the tiger of the abdomen, and that you just don't want to upset the tiger. What do you dream of for Rebecca? <sighs> That's a very good question. Um, my dreams are different than they used to be. They used to be the typical American dream, and I think my dreams have turned to making every day count. <laughs> And whatever time that we have that God has given us, it's a gift, and we will live that to the fullest. The hope is that research advances to extend Rebecca's life, but she is painfully aware of her fragile and uncertain reality. It's frustrating sometimes. Just a few weeks ago, Rebecca suffered another setback, this time hospitalizing her for 12 days. Her autoimmune disease started attacking her neurological system, which led to serious complications to her heart and lungs. No one's really sure what's going on with me. I'm just proud of her. She's my baby girl, and I hope we can do everything to help her, but we're also proud of how she's trying to help other people, and we, we support her with everything we've got. Rebecca's taught us not to settle and to push the limits and push ourselves towards progress. She's been a fighter, and we need to fight. We need to fight for these kids. Rebecca wouldn't want it any other way. She dreams one day of being a pancreatic physician herself. But until that day comes, she is remarkably reinforcing the reminder, love is the essence of life. If my story can give them strength or hope or whatever, then hopefully they'll be able to use that in a good way. I imagine a future where I and we're helping kids with pancreatic pain. I imagine all of us working together to make my wishes come true.